Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring a portion of this video. It seems absolutely crazy to say, even out loud, that phones that cost over $1,000 have like a manufacturer shelf life of a year, despite being very, very, very good for many years. But the phone that's been in my pocket more than anything else the past 12 months, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, is about to become outdated as we are at this point, probably like a month, say six weeks away from the iPhone 13's release. And sort of bring the iPhone 12 Pro Max coverage to an end, I have to kind of reflect on the past year. So for the first half of this phone's life, um, I wasn't going out anywhere. My butt was on the couch. And instead of taking pictures of football games, I was taking pictures of my backyard and my kids running around. Um, I was just at home all the time on Wi-Fi. Uh, but lately, my butt's been going to places little bit more and gradually. So using the phone has kind of gotten slightly more back to normal. So I've used the 12 Pro Max differently than I have used any other phone in my phone history. And during that time, I've noticed good and bad with it. So one of the only things that differentiates between like this iPhone 12 Pro Max and the smaller Pro, obviously besides the size, uh, is a camera system. And we've seen Apple go this route in the past with the Max slash Plus phones, getting slightly different camera setups. Uh, iPhone 7 Plus, for example, got telephoto, while the regular did not. Uh, but this year, 12 Pro Max has some few tricks up its sleeves, a very different camera system compared to the regular 12 Pro. So the main camera sensor is bigger, and it has sensor shift tech. The telephoto, now sit down for this, is an amazing 2.5 times space zoom compared to the regular two times zoom that was on the iPhone 12 Pro. Um, you've got LiDAR, which uh, maybe is working great, but maybe it's not. I don't know, I never really used it. I never had a need to map my dining room. Uh, but if I needed to, it was there. But kind of jokes and sarcasm aside, the phone and the camera system uh, are packing a lot. So that would probably lead you to believe that this camera is leaps and bounds better than what you're getting in the 12 Pro. And while the camera is great and not a stretch to say it's the best camera Apple's ever made because duh, it's the most new camera system Apple's ever made. Uh, the quality is hard to quantify and the difference is hard to quantify, especially in a day-to-day -day use. If you remember way back to the end of 2020, uh, when we first got all the iPhone 12s, I did a head-to-head comparison and the differences between the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max were, were subtle. Low light on the Max was slightly better Stabilization with the new sensor shift tech was arguably better. But when you take it away from like that head to head, looking at both the exact same time and just start using it like every other phone, the differences really faded into the background. What you are left with on a daily basis is a really consistent experience. So one area that is appreciated, at least for me and, and maybe for you if you care about sort of editing photos, uh, is the Pro Raw feature. Now, I can't see a reason this wouldn't be included on every iPhone 12 model because clearly the hardware and the software is there, but at the very least, it kind of is differentiating. It makes it a, a Pro feature. And if you really care about editing photos a lot, you can use it. So with this feature, you can really push the photos that you take, but you also get a really great photo like starting out. So if you don't want to edit them and sort of get really granular, you don't have to. The raw capability has been on phones for years, obviously, but the smarts of this, I think has made it a lot use, more useful, at least more useful for me. Uh, video on the iPhone. This is sit down, it's crazy. I mean, it's still really good. Uh, now supports HDR recording. And while I never needed it at all, uh, it's nice that it's here. Uh, it's nice to have those on the off chance that maybe I wanna do some hardcore HDR stuff. Um, but for me mainly, iPhone video has really come in handy for creating these videos. It's been a ton of times when I've actually interlaced clips from the iPhone 12 Pro with our studio camera, and it's done very, very well. People don't even notice. But early on in the iPhone 12 Pro's life, when we were pandemic-y, I used this as my regular camera for a lot, and it performed very, very well. But again, really well is sort of the theme of overall camera experience. And much like the rest of this phone, 
This is exactly what you'd expect from an iPhone. It performed exceptionally well over the year. But then again, so do all the other iPhone models. Yeah, it's the best bunch, but in like the back of my mind, I was still hoping for more of a difference from the Big Daddy Pro Max. So before I keep going with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, I'm gonna take a minute to thank this video's sponsor, Keeps. Uh, two out of three men will experience some form uh, of hair loss by the time they are 35. So it's something that a lot of men need and a lot of men can use, but aren't sort of something they always want to talk about. Uh, and Keeps is one of the most easy, affordable solutions to help prevent it and sort of minimize your hair loss. So with hair loss, prevention is key. Uh, Keeps treatments can take up to four to six months to start seeing results. So stay with it and stick with it for a while. A lot of hair loss treatments can get really expensive and hard to maintain and afford. Keeps is one of the most affordable options out there. Actually, if you go to keeps.com slash John Rettinger, uh, they'll give you 50% off your order. So if hair loss is something that you're experiencing and you want to try to find a solution for it, uh, Keeps has you covered. All the links will be down below. So when the iPhone 12 came out, and the iPhone 12 Pro, all the whole line, it was a new design, and that was awesome. But it was definitely polarizing, because it was the first redesign that really we'd seen since way back in the iPhone 10. I said a year ago, I dig it, I like it, and a year later, I still dig it and I like it. I think it looks sleek and elegant. I did have some reservations about durability. You know, hard corners tend to lead sort of more stress points, uh, but that hasn't really been an issue. Uh, stainless steel band on mine is scratched, but kind of all my phones tend to get scratched on the bands. So I don't know if I would have cracked my screen had it not been ceramic shield. Maybe you cracked your phone with ceramic shield because you dropped it differently, but I've been shocked. My phone should have cracked many, many times and I should have put a case on it. But again, like you're pretty, I mean, look, I'm just gonna, it's good. There's no, it's not, you can't see, you can see it. You gotta, Cordy, just zoom in on this. Look at that. You can see as I turn it. There are no scratches. Slight stuff on the sides and a little bit of wear and tear, but no scratches at all on the, the cameras on the back. And overall, if I give this phone like a, a hundred being a brand new and one being like, it is a busted cracked mess. It got run over by a truck and then a spaceship landed on it. I think I'm at like a solid, like 87, like really good for using this phone for pretty much a year. So for my experience, pretty durable. So underneath that sort of that ceramic coating is a display. You probably know what I'm going to say here before I get there. Um, there is no doubt this OLED panel is a really good looking display. It's allegedly made by Samsung. They make great displays. Apple does an awesome job with their color science. You'd expect it to be good. It gets really bright, supports HDR content, really good OLED contrast. All that stuff is like the barrier for entry for a phone that costs this much. But for the top end iPhone in 2021, I'm gonna say it again, there is no reason this should not have a high refresh rate display. If any of the iPhones should have it, it should be the big daddy, at the very least, the 12 Pro Max. So the lack of high refresh rate or ProMotion, on the flip side of that, the phone does have some really nice new features. Uh, 5G came around this year, been a huge buzzword, right? Every phone's 5G, this is the 5G version of that phone. But the fact that Apple included this early was surprising. If you could say anything about Apple, they generally wait things out, see how new tech shakes up, and then eventually uh, jump in. So the fact that they got into the 5G game this early, I think for a lot of people was a big surprise. 5G has been awesome when I do see the ultra wideband logo show up, but I can do screenshots to show how fast the download is, because it is very fast. But for the most part, 5G has been a novelty for me. Speeds are nominally faster, than I had with LTE, sometimes not even faster. Um, I get that theoretically, the speeds can get improved. They can have much, there's much more headroom than with LTE. I know all of the networks gonna get better in a few years, it's gonna be even faster. I know that, I can appreciate it. I get there has to be a first gen 5G phone. I just noticed no difference. I would have been totally fine having a really good LTE phone with a solid LTE modem and having a high refresh rate. Maybe your experience with 5G is different. Maybe it's blazing fast. You couldn't imagine not having it uh, but from my standpoint here in Southern California, it's been like, I mean, it's cool to see a 5G logo there, but it hasn't done anything uh, for me or made my phone experience better than anything else. So another thing that 5G kind of got me thinking about a lot 
uh, as I use this phone a lot, uh, was battery life. That was really the main reason that I went for the 12 Pro Max and the Max phone in general, is just the most milliamp hours. This year though, the milliamp hour is actually smaller than the previous version, and the inclusion of 5G has made battery life not as impressive as I would have hoped. And I know I can tweak things, I can turn off 5G, I can change different display settings, but just using the phone, I want the battery life to be awesome. Um, it's not to say it's not a full day phone. Generally I take the phone off the charger, let's say like 6.30, puts it on at like 10 p.m. I used to get like 20%, now I'm at like 10 to 15, not horrible. Still a one day phone, uh, but not a day and a half, a two day phone, like I had, had hoped that it would be. Maybe that's why they released sort of the MagSafe case. And speaking um, of that MagSafe case they just released, MagSafe in general was new for the iPhone 12 line, and I found it way more useful than I thought I was going to, uh, mostly for the wallet cases. Uh, that has been awesome. I've used Apple first party, I've used third party wallet cases. I don't use them every day, but when I want to have them, it's very cool to have it stuck to the back of my phone if something doesn't fall off. Magnets are not strong enough, uh, in my opinion, on the iPhone 12 line. It looks to be improved with the 13, but it is really handy to have. You can start to see the future of what MagSafe is going to be. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is clearly the best iPhone Apple has ever made. Obviously, I don't recommend going out and buying it now. The, the 13's, you know, like a month away. But I would say wait, say there's a discount on the iPhone 12 Pro, if maybe the 13 doesn't get that killer feature that you want, what you'll get from the 12 Pro Max is a really good phone. Maybe not the greatest phone in the history of, of phones, but you're gonna get a really good phone. It's gonna perform well, take really good pictures, have a solid display, and do everything that you want it to do. Assuming what you want doesn't involve a high refresh rate and amazing battery.